Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here with Jay Tumbleson from Rio Grande Games, looking at Tin Goose uh, by Matt Calkins. And I know this. Uh, there's saw some people playing at BGG Con Spring. Yeah. I've seen uh, Chris Farrell. He was talking to me out. I've already played it ten times, and he was raving about about this. Hope you can give an overview for I will. people who haven't will. seen it yet. Well, it's uh, about airplanes. Okay. Might have guessed that. Yes. Uh, sort of designed to represent the beginning of commercial airline travel in the United States, um, and it has. Uh, a, a strong negative component. Okay. And normally I'm not really fond of games with a strong negative component, but this one, for me, works. Okay. Not sure for everybody. Uh, essentially, uh, you start the game, uh, the board has uh, cities randomly chosen through a mechanism that's, that's defined that have demand. Mm -hmm. um, for travel? For, mm -hmm. for setting up, well, basically for having my company set up a, uh, okay. a, uh, some gates there to travel to and from there. Okay. So essentially, you know, at this point, the purple you know, represents uh, the purple, uh, the places that the purple company travels. Okay. You know, uh, the different cities you can fly to if you're flying on purple or blue and whatever. Right. So essentially, during the game, you want to expand your route, go to more places, and obviously, you'd rather go to places that have a high demand rather than places that have no demand. Right. Uh, although there's, you know, you get something for going anywhere. Um, the beginning of the game, every player uh, randomly gets uh, three gold cards. This mm -hmm. represents the first era of travel. Okay. And you get uh, actually three, four blue cards. Okay. And you'll get three red cards. Okay. Okay. Now, during the game, you have seven turns. The first two turns, as shown up here, and you track the turns there, will be gold turns. So everybody in turn order is going to play a gold card twice around. Then you've got three blue cards, and then okay. finally two red cards. Okay. Okay. Um, now, the, the different cards have really four different options. One of the more common ones is that, okay, you can do that one, is that you're going to play a fleet. Mm -hmm. And basically that's going to be auctioned off to all players at the table, um, and you're going to buy a fleet. It's a once around auction okay. with the player who played it, you're bidding last. Okay? Um, so obviously you want to add fleets right. to, uh, to your network that allows you uh, each fleet each fleet card comes with two planes so if I was the purple player and I managed to buy this at auction it comes with two planes okay I can add to my network okay but each fleet card also has uh, a risk factor mm -hmm. chance of crash okay your planes do crash and uh, the amount of oil consumption some are very stingy with oil some or more okay why is that important well that's the negative part of the game because there are other cards i don't know if you oh, have yeah, any the sitting there yeah. but you can play a crash when you play a crash it does different things um, and generally speaking here is where you can essentially at least to some extent control the effect of the crash okay okay you'll notice over here the hazard track each of the players will have a plane on the hazard track, which represents essentially how many of these uh, price markers they have on their cards. Okay. Okay. So, in this particular case, red has the lowest. So they would actually be able to move their income, say it was here, up two spaces. That's okay. a good thing for red. Right. White has the most. So if white was over here, white would go down to, okay? And then everybody still pays a dollar for, for every house. mark they have on the crash. Okay. So similarly, oil, there's cards which basically say, you know, there's an oil, cr oil crunch or something like that and you have to pay extra. Sometimes it's a dollar per oil can you have on your card. Sometimes it's two, three, it depends. So again, you just pay. 
okay. pay up. And the third thing is there are labor strikes. Okay. And everybody has two of these to start out with, and you can get more during the game. So what happens when there's a labor strike is you make a bid on your labor chips. Whoever bids the most wins the strike. They move forward on the track. Whoever loses move backwards. Okay. You pay money also. So during the game, you can decide, and this is what I really like about the game, whether to be high risk and just say, I'm going to focus on getting the best routes and the most planes, and I don't care <laughs> if they're risky, but I'm going to do so well building my routes and make so much money on my routes that I'll be able to afford the bad things when they occur. Okay. They will occur. The chance for none of them to occur in a game is like zero or <laughs> less than zero. Because, like I say, everybody has 10 cards. You're only going to play seven, right. but you get to decide when you play them. And ideally, yeah. you can bury the crash. If I'm doing high crash, then I'm not playing this. Yeah, you can decide not hazard. to play it. But again, in the blue turns, you're going to have play three cards. I have to play. So you will play a crash. You yes. could play two, or you could play one, but you can't play none. Right. You know, so sometimes, in many cases, you don't have a choice. But okay. sometimes you do have a choice, and you say, hey, you know, I'm way down here on the hazard track, and everybody else is up. Boom, there's a crash. Okay. You know, um, there's also ways to mitigate not getting planes. It's like, well, you know, if I don't get any planes and I don't auction them, or you know, I, the, the guy who plays the plane gets the last bid, so he's got the advantage on the auction. So what am I going to do? Well, we have these things. Okay. You know, I can take and add one oil and one risk, which isn't much different than some of the planes, mm -hmm. and get a plane. A plane. So I can get another plane just by doing that. So I'm yeah. not locked out of adding to my network just because I don't have another plane or another fleet in my, in my uh, network. Okay. Um, they also have uh, bonds or loans, if you want to call them. One of the things you can do on your turn is take a $40 bond. So if you think you're going to need money, you want to buy a big plane or you think a risk is coming up, a hazard, whatever, you can take 40 bucks and you get a bond. Okay. At the end of the game, you have to pay it back, 40 bucks. So there's no interest. So it's just an extra 40 bucks for you. Okay. Okay, what happens if there's a crash, you're supposed to pay 25 bucks, but you don't have 25. You can take a bond, but you only get 20 for the bond if you take it in an emergency. Okay. You still have to pay 40 at the end. Right. So I have seen a game where one player took six of these during the game and finished second. Okay. Yeah. So, because it's, it's an even money thing. It's just, you can decide to spend a lot on planes and build your network, you know, and as, as you build your network, um, you know, for example, if I built a plane to there, um, I immediately get something for it. And what I get is Whatever my income is, I don't have a gray on there. Let's say my income was six. Well, there's two demand markers there, so I would get 12 bucks immediately. Okay. And then you take one off. All right. On the other hand, if I was going to go here, I'd have to really want to go there. Uh, you know, I would uh, lose. Because you're spending into a market that's already saturated. Right, with, right. Sorry. And okay. so, I mean, you always, I'm sorry, you, what I didn't say very well, and I should have, is, so if my income was here, when I went to this place, I go up one, mm -hmm. because I've gone to a new place, and I get money. Right. If instead I went here, I'd go up one, but then there's two planes there, so I go down two. Okay. Okay, so you have to really want to be there. And there's reasons why you want to. There's special routes you can get. You get special money when you get the routes and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, seven turns and you're done. Okay. Most money wins. All right. Is there special locations you're going uh, able to go This is the international turn, track. Or? On the first turn, you can pay 10 bucks to go to Havana. Same with the second turn. Then on the third turn, you can pay 10 to go to Kingston, but that's done. You can't go back and go to the previous one. Okay. So it's not only a turn counter, once you get to seven, you're done, but also it gives you a chance to get international. They're worth 40 bucks at the end of the game, 
okay. each. So they're handy to have. But it's not building up anything. It's but not it's not building, building up anything here. here. So again, it's one of those games that has lots of ways to win. Okay. Uh, and you also have to pay attention to what other people are doing. If nobody's going on the international track, then you either choose to be the only person and then people will start coming because you, know, you can't, you know, if you're alone in something like many games, if I'm the only one doing international, I could end up with 280 at the end. That's just going to be a killer number right. because what you get is you get a certain amount plus you get the difference between how many you go to and others don't. Okay. So if you go to five and I go to two, you get a bonus for you're doing three more than I get and so on. So okay. you don't want somebody to get too far ahead on that track. Okay. Uh, and like you say, the rest of the map is you're going to the places with demand, building up money, building up your network. Okay. That's 10 Goose. All right. Thanks for having me.